and I'll be fun at Costco when we're shopping for bulk paper towels. Ah! It's not easy being a savvy shopper. A trip to the grocery store might not be as innocent as you think. There are plenty of things you need to watch out for. Here to help you navigate the tricky waters are 10 of the sneakiest grocery store tactics you never notice scamming you. Fake, 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 fake. Most baked goods aren't fresh. Oh, it's so fresh. Nothing better than when they're fresh. Not so better. It's hard to resist the smell of freshly baked cookies, cakes, and pies. The smell of chocolate chip cookies right out of the oven is enough to turn some folks into the cookie monster. However, many grocery stores don't pass the smell test. The bakery section might smell amazing, but many grocery stores trick customers by reheating frozen pastries. Those delicious sweets smell like they were made an hour ago, but the truth is far more sinister. Despite the pleasant aroma flowing through the air, those croissants on the shelf may have been previously frozen. The same goes for the bagels, baguettes, danishes, and strudels. Think twice about buying that apple pie because it was likely sitting in a freezer for a while. Head to the local diner or have your granny make one from scratch if you want real fresh made pie. The cakes, custards, and pies might be a little fresher, but they probably weren't made from scratch either. Those tasty treats were likely made using a prepackaged mix. Looks can be deceiving, but so can smell smell, apparently. If you want to avoid being duped, then Costco might be your best bet. Because at Costco, you save money. Some of the baked goods at Costco are previously frozen or made from a mix, but there are some staples that you can trust 100%. Loaves of garlic bread and multigrain bread are made fresh daily. The lemon meringue pies, cherry pies, pumpkin pies, and pecan pies are all freshly baked, too. Grocery stores are swapping fish. Fish! For sport only, not for meat. There's something fishy going on in the seafood aisle of your local grocery store. You might think you're buying salmon, but in reality, you're getting trout. The inferior fish might taste similar, but it still feels wrong to be tricked. No, God! Customers expect to get what they pay for, but seafood fraud is making that harder than ever. You've probably never seen a racket of this scale before. No pun intended. Grocers, fishmongers, and distributors are all working Working together to make seafood shopping more difficult. Pay attention when you're buying red snapper. You might think you're getting first-rate fish for your sushi party, but that filet might not be snapper at all. It could be a lesser fish like tilapia or tile fish. Red snapper usually costs about $23 a pound. That's not bad as long as you're actually getting snapper. Tilapia and tile fish usually sell for $3 a pound. That's $20 of your hard-earned money gone. Most of authorities don't care. What's a grocery shopper to do? Call Aquaman? Many stores make it hard to compare prices. My price just went up. Now, this one may sound familiar. You want to compare the prices of two items at the grocery store, but the units of measurement are different. Time to get out the calculator, because now you have to do some math to figure out which can of tomatoes is the best deal. Shoppers shouldn't have to be as smart as Stephen Hawking just to save a few cents. Grocery stores do this on purpose, and many customers get scammed into buying the more expensive item. No customer is immune to this scam, so it's best to bring a conversion chart with you the next time you're trying to determine which box of Rice Krispies offers you the best bang for your buck. A price comparison app will work wonders, too. Shoppers also have to deal with shrinkflation when shopping for deals, so you might have to complete a math problem every time you head to Whole Foods. 100 minus 43, take the one from the zero. Wait. <gasps> Some may not even know what shrinkflation is. Well, many companies deliberately shrink the size of an item to increase profits. Have you noticed how much that bottle of ketchup has shrunk over the years? The bottle is smaller, but the price is the same or higher. That's shrinkflation. And the consumer is the loser in the end. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! They hide rotten food. What in the devil's name is this? Has this ever happened to you? You buy a delicious looking box of strawberries at the grocery store only to discover that they're rotten when you get back home. Grocery stores are masters of deception. Fruits and vegetables might look fresh in the produce aisle, but many grocery stores use sneaky tactics to hide mold and other signs of decay. Some of the produce sold at grocery stores is more disgusting than the food on kitchen nightmares. To quote Gordon Ramsay, some grocery store managers 
managers are absolute donkeys. So how do grocery stores get away with selling rotten food? Some grocery store managers instruct shelf stockers to arrange food in a way that hides the nasty bits. Many shoppers don't check produce before putting it in the cart. When they get home, they're met with a nasty surprise. Surprise. Surprise, Cindy. Sure, most of the food can be returned, but most customers are too lazy to drive all the way back to the store, and grocery stores are counting on that. Besides, many people don't want to look like a Karen when returning rotten bananas. Most customers just accept their fate and toss the rotten food in the trash bin. Free samples. I, I don't cool like this. the flavor, but it's free, so I will continue to chew. This one's not really a scam, but grocery stores do use free samples to get you to spend more money. Be honest, it's hard to resist the temptation of a free sample. You need to be iron-willed to resist the allure of free food. And there's just one problem. It's not free if you end up buying what you try. It makes sense, doesn't it? The first taste may be free, but the next one will cost you. This sounds like back alley tactics. Who can eat just one chip? As the Pringles slogan goes, once you pop, you can't stop. If you try one chip at a sample table, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to want to buy a whole bag. One cheese cube is never enough. You're definitely going to be tempted to buy a whole block. That's how grocery stores get you. Some folks can make a whole meal out of Costco samples, but most people get suckered into buying what they try. Here's a helpful tip from comedian Joe Para. Give yourself five extra dollars to spend when you make a trip to the grocery store. You can use the five dollars to buy a product featured at a sample table, but there's no wiggle room. You can only spend five bucks. That's it. This way, you won't go over budget. Grocery stores can bend you, but they can't break you. Hiding the essentials. I will look for you. I will find you. Does this sound familiar? You just wanted to pick up some bread, toilet paper, and eggs, but somehow you ended up buying a whole case of Mountain Dew and a party-sized bag of M&Ms and five jumbo bags of Doritos. What's worse is that you're not even throwing a party. You didn't need that junk food, but how could you resist? It turns out grocery store managers can spot a sucker from a mile away. It's no coincidence that you had to trek through aisles and aisles of junk food just to get to the essential items all the way at the back of the store. Why can't the toothpaste be in the front at Walmart? Well, that's simply not good for stockholders and the company's bottom line. Did you think Walmart became the world's largest retailer just by selling essential items? Their stock price didn't go to the moon from toilet paper and laundry detergent alone. If you want to avoid the temptation of Reese's peanut butter cups and Kit Kats, just make sure you bring a grocery list. Stick to your list and everything will be fine. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. Those salt and vinegar chips may look tempting, but you don't have to buy them. Avoid junk food like Indiana Jones avoids snakes. That way you'll never go over budget again. Unfortunately, grocery stores are catching on. That's why store layouts are constantly changing. Grocery stores change where items are located so you accidentally stumble upon something new you didn't need. Charm pricing. Hey, it's my lucky day. A penny. Your luck just ran out! Have you ever wondered why the cost of an item isn't rounded up to the nearest dollar? It's rare to see an item that costs $20. Instead, it will cost $19.99. It's only a penny, but it makes it seem like you're getting a deal. This is what folks in the retail biz call charm pricing. But there's nothing charming about this ploy. It's actually a sneaky tactic to get you to spend more money. You see, there's actually a scientific reason why charm pricing works. Our brains are trained to read from left to right, so it's always the first digit that sticks out in your mind. An item might cost $1.99, but your brain automatically thinks, hey, it's only $1. <laughs> Take your hat off, boy, that's a dollar bill! But it's not one dollar, it's actually two dollars. Very, very sneaky. Mislabeled meat. Why would you do that? Unless 
You're trying to trick me somehow. Carnivores can have an especially hard time at the grocery store. Here's a tip, never trust the weight that's printed on the label. That juicy ribeye steak might not actually be 12 ounces. Sure, that's what it says on the package, but in reality, you might be getting shortchanged. I'm going to the feds and you're going down. Many grocery stores have been caught fudging the numbers when it comes to the weight of beef, pork, and chicken. Some grocery stores intentionally lie, but there are even sneakier ways that they can trick you. For example, sometimes the weight of the package is included in the total weight. Why should you have to pay extra for the plastic wrap and styrofoam? Instead of asking, where's the beef, you'll be asking, where's my money? What's a shopper to do? Some grocery stores pack their meat in ice to squeeze a few extra cents out of you. A penny here and there might not seem like much, but it adds up. It's not just ice that can make meat prices skyrocket. Some grocery stores pack their meat in a water solution to make the meat taste better. At least that's what they claim. Truth be told, this water solution rarely improves the flavor. You should be especially careful when it comes to chicken. Some meat producers and grocery stores inject raw chicken with stock or salt water. The result is a much plumper looking chicken. The bird may look fat fatter, but your wallet will be a lot thinner. No wonder so many grocery shoppers are clucking mad. The most expensive items are at eye level. <laughs> There's more than meets the eye at your local grocery store. Remember this phrase, eye level is buy level. Grocery stores know this. That's why they put the most expensive items right in your line of sight. The costliest items on the shelf are always placed at eye level. Unless you're Shaq or Warwick Davis, there's a good chance you're spending more money than you have to when you go grocery shopping. If you want to save a buck or two, simply squat down or reach up. You'll probably find a cheaper item on the bottom or top shelf. It may seem simple, but most people can't be bothered to look down or up. We're lazy by nature, but grocery stores use our laziness to their advantage. I see what you did there. Good one. Keep an eye on your surroundings the next time you're at the grocery store. The margarine that's right in front of your face probably isn't the best deal. Grocery stores will also strategically place items next to each other to get you to spend more dough. For example, that salsa next to the Tostitos is actually a more expensive brand. The cheap stuff is on the other side of the store. It's convenient, but convenience comes at a cost. That organic food might not be organic. It's organic. You don't have to be Ringo Starr or Michelle Obama to eat organic food. Regular folks enjoy buying organic produce as well. However, you need to be careful if you regularly buy pesticide-free produce because there's probably a very good chance that you're getting duped. Keep that in mind the next time you're picking up some kale for that salad. That organic food in your cart might not actually be organic at all. There's really no way to know for certain. In 2017, the Washington Post reported that a 36 million ton shipment of soybeans was falsely labeled organic when it entered a U.S. port. And it's not just soybeans that you have to watch out for. Pretty much any grain could be mislabeled. That organic corn might be full of chemicals and pesticides. Is there a problem? I'm just making sure no one ever has to eat this. You might be thinking, I don't eat corn, so it's no big deal. Well, what if that corn was fed to a cow? That organic New York strip loin you bought to celebrate your birthday might not be organic after all. If you want to avoid accidentally buying non-organic food, your best bet is to buy domestic produce. The quality and legitimacy of local products are more closely monitored, so you're less likely to be tricked. Ah, very nice. We're serving up more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment.